Hello, I'm Dr. Ruth Roberts, your pet's ally. I hope that you have all had a lovely weekend and that life is good and sweet and simple. been taking some photographs as we walk around San Miguel de Allende of people and their dogs, and we'll start putting them up on Instagram pretty soon. But there was an awfully cool photo uh, I took of a, a Weimaraner that lives in, uh, it's a pharmacy, but they actually make uh, botanical skincare essentially is what they're doing and he just was hanging out on the counter so check that out once it once would we hit him instagram with it so again hope that you are all really well uh, let me make sure i got the comments susie good to see you um and actually susie's Soup has expanded significantly in the fridge, popping the lids and ever flowing. Um, that's kind of peculiar. So if it's sat out cooling, which is what I do too, um, I can't see where this would be a big issue, but you are in Texas, I think, where it is hotter than fire, as, as they might say there. So maybe it's uh, fermenting. Um, just take, you know, do the stiff test. So if you smell it and it smells okay, then do the taste test. If you taste a little bit, especially where it's real bubbly, um, and you get this bacterial buzz on your tongue, then that means there's it's it's going south, so to speak. Um, so I don't know. I don't know if it's just everything sort of settling and air popping up, as you say, but if it's passing the sniff test and the taste test, you're probably okay. So yeah, it's in an air conditioned kitchen. I know. God, it's been so bloody hot there for y'all though. Um, so yeah, I mean, if, if he's still eating it, you're not seeing problems in the passes the sniff and taste test, you should be good to go. Let me pop over to the group page. And okay, good. Things are a little slow, evidently, in in uh, internet land. So beautiful batch of food, Jamie. Thanks for posting that. And Terry, I'm glad C Kobe is having a great time with the food. It's it's wonderful to see them really excited about eating again, isn't it? Um, and then this, I always love this. Um, we had a I had a client back in Charleston that unfortunately learned the hard way not to. Um, cook the crock pet food outside over rocks because her dogs ate rocks and that was not a good thing. Anyway, um, yeah, but they there's lots of dogs that sort of hover in the kitchen and are, can't wait till it's done to clean out the pot. Um, I hope that you all caught this video. If not, you can click it here. Uh, for those of you that are have iPets Ally Ultimate, this is sort of a reprise for you, but um, sort of whiz through the science at the end, but it's really amazing kind of what we've, what we've learned about CBD and THC products. Um, yeah, I don't know. I think Hannah may have made an error. Uh, iPets Ally will be at one o'clock Eastern and Susie, and then generally this is at, um, 1130. <laughs> so, uh, 1230 Eastern. Um, Jamie is asking about eggplant and does it have TCM properties and all that good stuff and is yellow zucchini considered a squash or a zucchini um, so there are yellow zucchini and there are yellow squash so yellow zucchini would be a zucchini um, and yellow squash would be a squash so even in this picture that Lolly kindly posted, you can see they're the same, but if you look for a yellow squash, um, you're going to see that it's the typical crooker neck where it's kind of almost um, sort of a, a C shape towards the bottom. Now eggplant is indeed a nightshade, and so if your pet has problem with inflammation in general or uh, tends to react to things allergically, it may not be a good idea. I love eggplant so much and I used to be able to eat it, but now when I eat more than one or two bites, it is ugly. Um, and unfortunately just really cleans my gut out, makes me react to it. Even quercetin is not enough to uh, kind of slow it down. But this is an awesome 
website about Chinese food therapy. And so it does have some benefits. It kind of, it is cooling, which is certainly to Willie's benefit at this point. Um, and it helps to regulate blood and circulation and clear heat. So uh, it also enters all of these channels, the uh, large intestine, the stomach, the spleen, the liver, and through the uterus, which uh, he doesn't have anymore. But it is good I as far as, you know, doing some of these properties. So, yeah, it's just like, God, I love it so much. And it just is so mean to me. I hate this. Um, and I used to be able to eat lots of it. So, oh, well, things change. So that's that answer, but let me drop this link in here because it is a great source to kind of look at what foods are helpful. Um, so let's see, I'm going to pop back over to the group. And um, Kathy is asking about what flowers are best for making dog cookies and treats. And what I'm going to tell you, Kathy, is all of them, as long as it doesn't make a problem for your pets. Um, so as far as they're, they're not reacting to it. So things like teff, um, buckwheat, oat can have issues as far as pets that react to wheat. Soy is soy. Soy I would really just skip, frankly. Um, you know, potatoes, again, it's also a nightshade. If your pet doesn't have problems with them, great. All of them you could use, and I would say use them in rotation. Um, yeah, so so back to Jamie saying that, uh, hmm, or maybe, and frankly, what I would do, Jamie, is just try a little bit. Um, Mary Jo makes this these eggplant fries, which are just killer. Uh, so she peels the uh, eggplant, uh, quarters it into roughly, you know, steakhouse fries size pieces, coats it with olive oil and roast it in the oven. God, is it good. Love it so much. Um, so try that for you all at home. See how you all do it and give Willie one or two pieces and see how it goes. Um, the roasting obviously is going to add some heat to it, but it's a way to check it out uh, without creating another issue. And then the other thing you could do would be to look at something like um, baba ganoush, which is a, a more of a Greek recipe using it. I would go really light on the garlic, though. Um, actually, sorry, it is not Greek. It is Mediterranean, Turkish, somewhere in that neighborhood. And then another variation on that is an Italian take, which is caponata. And that's used like a topping for bruschetta, but that's tomato, onion, and, and eggplant as well. So, you know, try a little, test it. That's what I always say. Try a little bit, see if that's a problem, and then go from there. But yeah, do be wary with the, um, with the nightshades, because they definitely, if he's reacting, and he has been, uh, that could create some pretty untoward effects, especially um, allergic reaction. You know, for us, it's sinuses. For him, it may be itching. And then also uh, GI distress. Let's see. And then May's asking about ah, another eggplant recipe. Um, yep, and it's already been cooking on low for five hours. So, yeah, that sounds like it should be it. If you can take a spoon and sort of um, mash it up, so to speak. I mean, that's kind of my test for is it done? I'm poking around and the carrots are soft, the hard squashes are soft, and anything hard is is soft, essentially, then yeah, you're done. Um, on stovetop, it's generally taking us about eh, maybe an hour and a half, two hours, depending on what we're doing. We had some ground chicken yesterday, so that was really, really quick. So I hope that's helpful, May. Um, and I think that is it. For today, let me double check with the sheet of questions. Okay, cool. Actually, no, it's not. Um, so Brenda is asking about beans. And um, I guess a year and a half ago, maybe, um, there was this thing that came out and said basically that beans are toxic to dogs and they are not. And so if your friend had a batch, you know, had cooked some um, beans and they were not uh, well cooked through, then yes, you may want to consider soaking them 
um, at least you know overnight before you throw them into into the pot to cook. And kidney beans seem to be the ones that are most difficult to cook through. Um, and this thing that she mentions, phytohemagglutinin, is a type of anti-nutrient in food. And so this is where you can have problems as far as improperly cooked raw. And this is what the FDA is saying, right? Um, the syndromes caused by the ingestion of raw. So kidney beans that alone are in salads or casseroles. Um, so you really do need to cook them through. So I don't know. I just always put the beans in a, in a bowl and covered them with water, like to the tune of, uh, you know, if you've got a bowl, something like this, and you've got this much beans in there, just fill the bowl up with water. And then what you're going to want to do is pour the water off, rinse them, and then go ahead and cook them. So that's always a good idea. These are, again, kidney beans tend to be a bit tougher. And so that's where you're going to want to really soak them much longer. Beans like lentils, field peas, things of that nature don't really seem to require so much soaking. Um, so I hope that is helpful, Brenda. Um, and then the last one is from Karen Briggs. And she's asking about Nature's Pharmacy Dogzymes, Probiotic Max. And yes, it's something that it's a great off-the-shelf product. But here's what I found. So, Kathy, Karen, first thing I'm going to say is, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Um, but here's what I found is that for dogs that have GI issues, this can end up being a problem because of the ingredients. And uh, let's get back to those. There we go. Um, so the problem is... FOS. And so it's like that's in everything anymore. And if your dog has no GI issues, it absolutely may not be a problem at all whatsoever. The other thing is that uh, it is a fairly good um, digestive aid, but where it kind of falls down is the, the um, probiotic portion. So it's a relatively low count, 10 billion CFU. Um, the, the other thing is, is that these types of probiotic products, their activity may be fairly low. And so if you really, really, really need to have a good uh, probiotic on board, this is not going to do it for your dog. I, I saw so many clients whose pets had GI issues that were using this because it's kind of what everybody was recommending and they just weren't getting any results. And so here is what I suggest. So we've got, I used to say, use 100 billion colony forming units of a multi-species product. And that's the clear symbiotic and things of that nature. But what I found is that a sporulated version, which is what phytospore is, um, is probably a much better choice. And so if we look at this, it's really low count. It's only 4 billion colony forming units. It has only uh, three organisms in it, but the two bacillus species are really important for sort of forming the architecture, if you will, um, for the rest of the microbiome. Now, this is what's really interesting about phytospore for pets, Pediococcus, is an organism that is found growing on grass. So maybe dogs that are eating grass all this time have been trying to sort out their microbiome. The one other potential downside here is that it has beef liver extracts. So for pets that have um, sensitivities to beef, this is not a great choice. So what is, you ask? And and I'm supposed to remind you that we're having us a 20% a off sale. Uh, we're shifting warehouse companies, so we're trying to sell through stock that's in one and get over to another. So until we run out, um, these products are 20% off, including Phytospore. And then the uh, turmeric and curcumin product is actually buy one, get one free. So where I was going with all of this is if your pet has GI issues and or food sensitivities to beef, the human version of phytospore is megaspore um, and 
this is one that I use personally. Uh, and, and for HIO, it seems to do a much better job. And I apologize, we don't have the uh, um, ingredients label here. But again, it is a, it's a relatively low count. I think it also is somewhere around four to six billion CFUs. There are four species here. But I have to say it has done a fantastic job at really getting gut disease turned around. Now, the, the big thing with both of these is that because they are sporulated, what that means is that when you eat them, um, they don't get damaged by your digestive system. They're in a form that's sort of like the little microbiome good probiotic guys are in there sort of hibernating. And they don't come out of the spore until they hit the colon, which is where they can actually do the work. So for this reason, this is kind of, these are the products I've been recommending. So I hope that is helpful and it makes sense, Karen, but you're right. There's nothing, you know, if things are working well, your dog has good digestion, no health issues, you know, keep using the, the Nature's Pharmacy because it does do a good job. It's a very inexpensive product. Um, however, if you feel that something is changing, um, as far as inflammation is increased for one reason or another, um, you're not seeing your dog look as healthy as you would like it to, then that's when I would suggest taking, taking a look at this. Now, the other question is, is then what do you do about the um, uh, digestive enzyme portion of it? And frankly, this is where I would look at Zypan, which is a standard process product. And they've got a combination of all of the stuff we're looking for as far as betaine hydrochloride to provide hydrochloric acid in the stomach, um, pancreatin, steric, and ammonium chloride, and pepsin. Now, the other thing they include are things like bovine pancreasitazole, bovine spleen, and ovine spleen. Again, you know, using that process of like feeds like, we're providing the um, sort of raw materials that are needed in the gut to help correct pH, support digestion, and uh, getting it down to the right uh, section of the GI tract to provide the support it needs to do. So hope that is easy and simple to understand. I'll uh, drop some links in, in here for you so you've got those as well. And that, my friends, is pretty much what we've got for you this week. Um, and so next week we'll be back um, and have some more answers to your questions. Until then, take good care. And remember, your pet's best health starts in the bowl. Many thanks, and I will see you next week. Bye.